morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Anne. How are you? Oh, I'm great. It's good to see you, Kyle. Hi, everyone. This is Monday Morning Coffee with Kyle and Dan. I'm Ann Rossley here with Kyle Harvey. We sell real estate in downtown Chicago, Baird and Warner's Gold Coast office. We love to come to you every week to talk about real estate. So, hey, hey. good morning. You are somewhere new. Tell everyone where you are. Oh, yeah. I'm in my office. East Coast office. Yeah. Because it's August, people. Where are you? <laughs> where you are watching from today. It's an age age of being able to work from anywhere. So Anywhere. Anywhere. I'm you know. in my usual spot. Um, yeah, until next week. Until next. Well, for, we're going to be off for two weeks. That's what we are. Doing. Yeah. So let's give you the update quick. You know, August is slow. We're going to not have a lot to report. Hopefully not a lot to report. If something big happens, we'll break in with breaking yeah. news. Exactly. But it's August. There will be no break. No. Listen, Chicago's got the DNC. It's going to be rocking in Chicago. We just ended Lollapalooza. My two nieces came in for Lollapalooza. It was nice to see them. And um, I saw no signs of Lollapalooza, which is a win for me. <laughs> well, you know, I'm at ground zero. You are. You know, everybody, if you know where the Buckingham Fountain is and the uh, Art Institute and Symphony Center, I live between the two, basically, on Michigan Avenue. And so for NASCAR, I was turn 11. <laughs> I'm at the exit for Lollapalooza. So it was great people watching over the weekend. So what do they have to turn off the noise at 11? PM. Yeah. And you know what? The concerts were ending at 945. So it was not a big deal. Yeah. It's easy peasy. Yeah. Well, then great just... people watching, though. Holy smokes. And I'm old because mm -hmm. I was horrified by what I saw. <laughs> some point, I look forward to hearing on our drive where um, all about what you saw. Yeah. So next week, Kyle and I are headed to tennis. For a couple of days in Cincinnati. So we're both big tennis fans. So we're going to be able to enjoy that. We'll report back on that. So yes. And then then we're both um or I'm getting out of town for the DNC. Right. No, I'm here for the DNC. So I can I'm not ground zero for the DNC though. <laughs> It'll be at McCormick and United Center. So um you know everybody's talking about how crazy it's going to be for DNC. I don't think it's going to be at all. I think it's going to be calm. Well, you know, they, they said that NASCAR was going to be a nightmare. NASCAR was nothing. You know what? And I was downtown and NASCAR was awesome. Yeah, see, you know, know, I thought it was fantastic. So, well, I'm getting out of town also to see a friend who I get to see twice a year. So that's, yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome. This is a good time because it's going to be slow. And since we're speaking of slow, let's, do uh, let's get into stats, shall we? Let me remove all the periphery stuff and we'll get to it. As always, we're talking lakefront communities, basically South Loop up to Edgewater and including West, like West Town, Logan Square, Wicker Park, Roscoe Village. Talking about single family homes first. All right. During the month of July, 106 homes closed. As you can see, that was up a bit. I decided to have clean graphs this time. Before I was into like what happens every month, we're going to see how you feel about this. Report back. Okay. 72 homes under contract. Look down. Based on inventory, not a surprise. 254 homes are currently for sale. And that's 3.3 months worth of inventory. The median sales price is coming down a little bit, 1.330. I would postulate that if we dug into the numbers, it's because fewer luxury homes are selling and not that the home's values are generally declining. I think you're absolutely right. Um, keep going. All right, condos. 997 closed in July. 823 are currently under contract. It's declining, but you know, it's declining folks, but it's a natural decline. It's what we typically see happen this time of year. So mm -hmm. we're coming off the high. Um, so yeah, 2420 currently for sale, low inventory is the name of the game, 2.9 months supply. And look at this, condo prices continue to rise. And yeah. in this case, I don't think it's because more luxury condos are selling. I think that's I, actually absolutely correct. I don't have any 
statistics to bear that out to the game. So maybe that'll be my next deep dive. Okay, this is somewhat interesting. Year-to-date sales through July, so seven months, 6338 condos have sold in raw numbers. It's a little bit less than last year because median sales price has gone up. If we look at volume, it will be higher. I just like looking at units for this statistic. I think it gives us a little more facts. Yeah. And look at this. Number of single family homes in our market area is up 8.1%. That's interesting. Yeah, right? And yeah. that's closed. That's not volume. So no. All right. So that's that. Uh, this is the same as we saw a couple weeks ago. Through June, foot traffic is down almost 19% versus previous year. Um, that 159, almost 160 is a little bit less than the Midwest, but higher than the United States showing traffic numbers. Mortgage rates are declining a little bit. Look at that nice little uh, on the right side of the graph. It's coming down a little bit. I like to see that. There's and a real sense that it's going to come down a lot it's in the next bit. That the maybe. spread is going to compress a bit um, in anticipation of the rates coming down. That would be fantastic. Yeah. The, the big story in my mind for the marketplace is the importance of uh, owning versus renting, given the market. Um, $23.50 is the median rent price. And while you see it's gone down a little bit from the last month, it's still way up versus previous year. So you can see uh, on the far right, the numbers up versus last year. But, you know, last year we were saying the same thing that they were up. And so, when you look at the neighborhoods, the loop, almost $3,700 a month, near north, $3,400 almost. It's not cheap. Are these one bedrooms or two bedrooms? These are one bedrooms. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then this is, okay, so here's this I thought was a fun chart. The annual rent changes in the Midwest. So they're saying that we're up 16% versus this is a couple of weeks ago versus previous year. Um, look at Texas. Texas is down Fort Worth 10%, down 8%, down 7%. Which is what that is. Are, are they just building a lot more? I think that's part of it. I think we're getting residual, oh I moved to Chicago, uh, I've moved to Texas. Oh I changed my mind. Moving, you know what I mean? There's that big rush during COVID, and I think everybody's kind of backed off that now. Well, I so who has moved? There's a company that's moving out of California to Texas, and it's a big company. I forget who it is. Well, isn't well, Elon Musk was doing it. Well, Tesla, yeah. But there was somebody else, I forget who. Um, but I think one of the interesting things that I've experienced, and remember, this is just anecdotal is there are a lot of Texans who are saying, I can't live here during the summer months. It yeah. is too hot. And ultra rich people can buy a place in Chicago and they are coming to Chicago people. Um, but regular people, you know, you can't have a dog who can't go outside. I mean, your dog has to go outside. Right, um, right. So I think there are people who are, who will be thinking now that we can live anywhere, let's live somewhere where it's not 125 degrees with 90% humidity in the summertime. Yeah. And I'm getting people too. This is interesting. I've had two different people contacting me who live full time in Tennessee or Kentucky and want a summer home in Chicago. In the city. They want a yeah. experience. Yeah. Well, well, Chicago's a great place. I mean, look, I mean, well, look what we've been talking about this summer, all the fun stuff going on. And that isn't even in talking about Grand Park Music Festival and the neighborhood festivals and the lakefront. And museums and restaurants yeah. and theater and all sorts of cultural activities. And um, it, let's be honest, a great climate. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we are. We have colder winters, colder winters than Nashville. Right. But it, Last winter wasn't terribly cold. And it's all about 
a coat. If you get the right coat, you can get through the cold. And our Absolutely. cold doesn't last all that long. No, no, so, that's right. Chicago is a great city. It's a great mm -hmm. city. Okay. Underappreciated by the public at large. Okay, but look at this. When we started following the Zumper's rent report, Chicago was number 19 in the country in terms of rent. They didn't get rid of cities. We're now number 10. So it keeps climbing up. And you can see we've got we're higher than DC now. We're just under Los Angeles, San Diego, Arlington, Virginia, San Jose, California, Miami. I mean, it's not inexpensive to rent here. I can't believe that we are above Washington. Washington Isn't that something? That is that is crazy because Washington is a city of renters because so much of the um, so much of the population comes and goes based on the government. Yeah, yeah. So I, I find that really interesting. I wonder if um, they've done a lot of building in the surrounding areas or something. Well, that could be, but um, that that could be. But look, Arlington, Virginia is up at number seven. Well, that's what I mean. That. Oh, yeah. Out. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The people are moving to Arlington instead of saying staying yeah. in Washington, D.C. That could be okay. a good point. Interesting. So that's it. I mean, um, so how would you sum that up? We have, you know, prices for homes are basically stable. Prices for condos are increasing. Inventory continues to be low, but it, we're on a seasonal trend. We are, but right now we're in August and it doesn't matter where you are in the year, where you are in COVID, anything, August is quiet. Right. And so we are in, we're in the quiet days. But um, I think, for, so in my real estate practice, most buyers have been cash buyers in the last, since, since interest rates went up. Mm -hmm. Most of my buyers are cash buyers. And once interest rates come down enough and maybe a point um i think we're going to be flooded with demand now will that be enough to get sellers out of their homes because it's a lot of this is sellers refusing to get out of their homes i don't know whether that's going to be enough to get them out of their homes because some of it is interest rates some of it is well there's nothing else on the market that i want to go to and some of it is and i'm talking to you boomer um, I can stay here. I'll just get help when I, you know, need to go to the home or, you know, what, even though I need to downsize, I'm just going to stay. Yeah. I think there's some of that. You know, the other thing too, people talk about waiting on the sidelines because they're not sure what's going to happen with the election. But you and I have looked over these numbers nationally, like nine out of 10 times, the number of sales goes up after an election. The prices go up after the election. So no matter who wins, people. no matter who wins. Exactly right. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to wait and see how things shake out. You know, you, you know what's going to happen, too. If those interest rates continue to drop, people are going to jump back in the games. And then what's going to happen? Prices are going to go up. So, you know, it's you can always refinance. It's a good time to act. Yeah, it's a good I'm time to act. talking to um sellers who say, if I can't get my price, I'm just going to wait. And I've been, and it's, and, and that can work for certain properties, but for a lot of properties, right. The value of the building or the value of units in the building has dropped no matter how good yours is or whatever it's dropped. And, um, if you wait, it could drop more because there'll be different places that people want to live and they've got more money. So they'll go to even newer places. So right. owning up to reality and not sort of deferring the decision because you don't like the choices is um, think about it. Think about um, and what I've actually been saying to a couple of my clients is, who are having a hard time making a decision is read about decision making and how good how good decisions are made actually look into it because sort of just saying i don't want to face it is not <laughs> right so, anyway there we go
That makes good sense. Go. What would you like to talk about next? Let's talk about happening? August 17th. August 17th. So now we're talking about sellers in August 17th. Um, in the olden days, um, so we're going to compare old versus new. Old being August 16th. <laughs> May, right. And new being August 18th. Yes. Um, so every seller will enter into a listing agreement with a brokerage. And then Ann and I are your designated agents under the Baird and Warner brokerage. Um, and the terms, the main terms of this agreement are exclusivity, meaning Baird and Warner and Kyle Harvey or Ann Mosley gets to sell your place. So even if you find a friend, our work, we are the ones who get credit for that sale. Um, the length of the term of the agreement, it can't be longer than one year, but it can be anything. You work out with your broker how long the term of the um, marketing agreement will be. It sets out the compensation that you would pay um, your broker and any compensation that you would pay a cooperating broker, the cooperating broker being the buyer's agent. It would lay out the services that we provide and your obligations as a seller, and that's the duties of the parties. But the services provided by us and you, okay? It also has, just FYI, very importantly, a very, very strong language on the Fair Housing Act that both you and I, you seller, and I, agent will comply with the Fair Housing Act in all of our activities to sell your property. Right. New day. Can you hit go or am I the go goer? I have control. Look at me. <laughs> so um, the change, all of that will be the same, except um, the next few things. First, though it's always been in there, implied, um, and spoken by us, but now it has to be, we have to include a statement that says all compensation of your broker is negotiable. And that's true. It's always been true. And I've always negotiated with my clients on what the, the amount will be. So, but now we have to have those words in the agreement. Okay. Um, then it says that that once that compensation is set, it's for the services that the listing brokerage and the listing agent will provide. Um, okay, so you tell me, you re do this. Well, so it's any uh, dollar amount or percentage based on the services provided. So it's going to lay out the services that are that we provide in the agreement, which is similar to before. You know, based on the skill of the listing agent, other factors might be present in the marketplace. Um, so it's going to say, listing agent, I will pay you X for doing this. As always. But, but, but it's really clear. <clears throat> so listing agents who do more and are better at it will be able to negotiate a higher, higher price. And listing agents who are going to provide fewer services who are less good at it will negotiate a lower price, perhaps. Very similar to the way it's been. Always. And then um, it may contain a, oh, so um, so in this, as if anyone who follows us, um, last week we talked about um, buyer's agents and um, what it's going to be like for a buyer as of August 17th. But um, some buyers are going to say, I don't want to pay for an agent. I can do this myself. Most most listing agents are waiting for all these unrepresented buyers to come. And um, we will charge our sellers more to do all the work for unrepresented um, buyers because it is much more difficult. It is much more risky for a listing agent to work with it to facilitate a transaction with an unrepresented buyer. And, and much more work. I mean, absolutely. 
who's going to who's going to make sure that the buyer is able to pay? Somebody's got to reach out to their lender and confirm or vet them in some manner. You know, who's going to make sure that the buyer packets turned into the condo association, that they're meeting the target dates for their loan? All these things would have to be done by the listing agent if there's no buyer's agent making sure those deadlines are met. And so all of that, we have to do our work and that of a you know, non-existent list, uh, buyer's agent. Right. But all of that, at the same time, we have to walk a very fine line of not accidentally doing something that makes them think that we are their agent too. I mean, we have to, because I don't rep, I don't do dual agency. Neither do I. No, I won't do it. So I have to be very careful not to do anything that implies that I am there because then it becomes my risk. And really, that's not what we're trying to do. So for all of those reasons, we will, I will include a, um, an additional amount of compensation for Baird Warner and me in the event that we have to walk that line and um, f facilitate a transaction with an unrepresented buyer. Right. Bottom line, all of this is negotiable. Now, it is negotiable in the sense that um, we will list, you know, any agent will listen to you, understand your concerns, understand your needs, but that they, you and they, you may not be able to afford all of these agents who charge more because you get more service. But that's up to you, seller, what you um, what you want to pay. Right. Right. Oh, what's this Department of Justice? Yeah. Well, in your notes, you said. The Department of Justice says, so I put the big seal on here to make okay. it look official. What do you think? I did it. I, I scared you, didn't I? You did. <laughs> in trouble. So here's the thing. So that's, that's a lot of words, people. The Department of Justice is really um, paying attention to these changes and, and fully endorses the changes that are being read that um, the National, Associate, National Association of Realtors agreed to. But the bottom line is, as a seller, you cannot offer to pay the buyer's agent anymore. You, well, you, so you cannot make an offer to pay. That said, you can't have it in marketing materials. We cannot put it. We well, we don't know what the Department of Justice is going to do. We, um, Baird and Warner is taking the Department of Justice at its word that it's going to be looking at this hard. And so they have prepared their agents to not get in trouble. So we are not going to get our clients in trouble. So we are not going to communicate offers of compensation for buyer's agents. We're going to say, put anything, all your, the terms of your transaction, all of the terms of your offer into the offer, and my seller will consider them. That's it. That's it. So we are not going to do not call Kyle Harvey or Ann Rossley up on the phone and say, is your buyer, go, is your seller going to pay my compensation? Put it in the offer. Right. Okay. Oh, there we go. But, Ann, you take this one. Yeah. So what we're doing when we're meeting with our sellers these days, we're saying, you know, look, when you bought this property, it was baked into the price. Please expect and put your price at a number that you will see somebody asking for an offer of credit off credit. Yes. Can you tell I didn't get much sleep last night? Yeah. <laughs> Expect that your offer will include a request for a credit. Yes. For the yeah. agent's buyer's agent's compensation. To cover it, yes, but it won't say that. It'll say just, I want a credit. And that's fine. We've been negotiating credits and offers since the beginning of time. You know, we've offered... We've asked for credits for decorating. We've asked for credits for help in down payment costs. And that's really what this is, is help in paying for buyer's costs to buy the property. So that said, um, we it will be different and it will be separate. And there is a there's a rider. And I don't know if you've seen this rider yet that um, that includes sort of buyer's agent compensation rider, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but 
buyers have to be really clear with their lenders, ones who are not paying cash, um, what is for paying the buyer's compensation, the buyer's agent, and what is a closing cost credit, because there are rules within lending that make that important. Right. And you know what? You bring up a really good point. When we get a pre-approval as the seller's agent from now on, we need to make sure that that pre-approval has considered buyer agent compensation. So there's just, there's, there is complexity ahead, but we're on it. Okay. What's the likely effect on marketing your home? What do you say, Anne? Very little. I mean, it's basically going to be the same thing as always. It's just that, you know, when you get your offer, they'll include a credit. And uh, yeah. And the reason we say this is not that the industry is resistant to change and that change was necessary. The reason we say it is that it just makes sense that agents are paid out of the pile of money on the table and not separately, that there's a right. separate check written. It just makes sense that this is how it would work out. So, I mean, it's it's the way it works out in mergers. It's the way it works out in everything, that this all gets paid in the same way. So to pretend as though we're going to be doing something different doesn't mean that, or to do this kind of stuff differently, doesn't mean that what was done in the past was necessarily wrong. Um, it just, or that we're resistant to change. It means this is, it just makes sense. Right. Okay. Absolutely. <gasps> Townhouses. Okay. So people. How fast will it sell? We got from. <laughs> how fast will it sell? In August, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the previous ones that I did that were the um, single family homes, no change. One's under contract, all the rest are for sale. So we're now shifting to townhouse edition. So these are three townhouses. Interesting. I, I'm so interested in your thoughts on this, Anne. The first one is 250 West Scott Street, Unit D. It's on the market for just under 90, uh, 900,000. Mm. It's in this area that is um, been in the last 20 years, 15 years reclaimed. I've got two that are in the what people would before in the before times call the Cabrini Green area. So I want your thoughts. This is 250 West Scott. So here we have, I'm going to do the. Um, the uh, floor plan. It's a small, oh, I have it here. It's a three, bedroom, it? three bedrooms, two and a half baths. It's 2,200 square feet. So it does look small. Um, it's got one exterior spot, parking spot. Okay. But the marketing focuses on safety. It's in a gated community. The parking is all behind gates. And then we've got the house. So this house was purchased by this owner in 2013 for $520,000, and it's on the market for just under $900. So this is the main floor. This is the parking pad. Well, you're bringing up an interesting thing. I was just talking to Tom, my husband, and I was saying that there were a few years where people didn't want townhomes because of the verticality and because they prefer to be in a single family or one level condo. And I think the way pricing has gone with single family homes, there's a change now. Don't you think townhomes are more popular versus, yeah. say, three years ago, five years ago? Um, and I feel that that's also the case about duplex downs. Yes, absolutely right. There was a time when we would show property and people say, no way I'm looking at a duplex down. Now people like them because they serve the purpose of square foot, good price per square foot. <clears throat> All right. So the city uh, was really worked on the sewer system and they flood much, much less. There's no, yeah. there's much less of them. And new ones have the French drain tiles and the, yeah, so they don't have the water issues. Old ones eh, may may have some issues, but okay. So how fast will this sell? That's really pushing the price for that area. I think so too. Um, yeah, I'll be interested. It's, it was leased until um, till the end of uh, July. It went on the market five days ago, so they um, they probably staged it. But I I wonder how fast do you think this will sell? 
This time, um, I'm gonna okay. I'm, I'm gonna say 45 days with a price reduction. Okay, so it'll go under contract in 45 days with a price reduction. The description talks about the community in here. Talks about how people get together, kids play together. It's a very family oriented. So what they're trying to do is say we're safe. We're um, you know it's a it's a great place to raise kids. 2,200 square feet is not a lot, but you know it's cute. Okay, yeah. so yeah. you say 45 days. I'm going to write that down. Right. Oh gosh, all right. No, no, because this is good. With the price reduction, though, they're going to have to reduce the price. 45 days price. Okay. It'll be interesting to see because it's one of few. Oopsie. And now we got the next one. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, 1493 Clybourne. Hmm. Well, this okay. is on the market being listed by my friend and child childhood friend, Kim Kerbis. Cute little one. This is also in a gated community on Clybourne between um, between Division and North Avenue. Really, um, it was built in um, 2000. So it's only got a one. It's got a garage spot and an exterior spot. Um, the, the owner paid five hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred in 2011. So when Property prices were low. It's three bedrooms, two and a half baths, and it's 2,323 square feet. So it's bigger. And guess what? It has an elevator. So this is, they did not provide, and nor would I have provided a, a floor plan for this because the kitchen is on the first floor and the living room, dining room is on the second floor. So yeah, it's kind of tricky. This is the living room, dining room. The kitchen's downstairs, people. Um, but you have, in this corner here, do you see my cursor circling? No, Circle. I do not. Okay, go to the back by the windows. Yes. The door is the elevator. Okay. So you, you send- You, you almost have to have an elevator where you, I mean, like even the single family that you sold on state had a dining room on the first floor where the kitchen was. Yeah, but at least the dining room was on the first floor. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 So this is on the market for ju um, seven, just under seven fifty. Cool. How do you overcome that floor plan flaw? Holy camole. I know. But it's pretty and it's bright and it's got an elevator. I think so you have to you have to just plan on not having formal dinners. Yeah. It's hardwood floor throughout, which is kind of great. That's a great. Um, sure. On an elevator, the elevator would be great for, you know, travel, you know, getting all the luggage down, but also I just have a cart in the back, you know, one of the little carts to send things up. So yeah. um, that is, so it is looking to get $150,000 more than it bought than when it bought in uh, 2011. Okay. How, what do you think is, um, what do you think it'll sell and, and Will it require a price drop to do so? Oh, here's another piece of information. It was under contract and fell apart. This is back on the market. It was under contract right away and then fell apart. Well, the price is much better, $7.99, than the other one. But it's $49. Oh, $7.49, yeah. So it's $100,000 less than the one we just looked at. And it's slightly larger. And it's, yeah, 2,300 square feet. So, but still, I think that's a permanent, uh, what's the parking? It's a, is it garage or? They have one garage spot and then, a, you know, you park in front of your garage. Okay. So you can get two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's going to take, it's going to be 90 days. Okay. So you say 90 days. I think it, will, it may have sold this weekend. Okay. God. Somebody, I don't know. Maybe young people don't care so much about the dining because they don't need a formal dining room like old farts. <laughs> I don't need a formal dining room. Okay, next one. All right. Oh, wait, sorry. Number three. Number three. So this one is in Lincoln Park. So the other two were in the former um, area that, was impacted by the by Cabrini Green. This is in an area that has been Lincoln Park 
DePauli area for a long time and doing great. So this is DePauli. DePauli. Um, so this is on the market. This is 2202 North Lakewood. It's on yep. the market for $915,000. It last sold a year in 2021, excuse me, in 2021, March 2021, for just under 800000 So they want 115000 more. Mm -hmm. And um, there are very few improvements. They've, you know, HVAC, a little bit of HVAC, but and maybe not even. It's the HVAC is from 2021. It could have been put in by the previous owner. So let's see. This is three bedrooms, three full baths, smaller, 1,900 square feet. So, and it's got wow. um, one garage, one exterior spot. Okay. So this is the floor plan, everybody. Um, I love to give you a floor plan when um, when it's possible, but he's, mm, it's, my. it's really small. But beautifully done. So there's very little on the first floor. On the first floor, there is a um, a terrace and um, a foyer and I think family room slash third bedroom, right? Yeah. Typical floor plan. Bedroom, but small. Yeah. Pretty. It's in yeah. good shape. This is the bedroom, family room on the, and it's got a Murphy bed. Um, at the back, which is nice because then you can have it for anything and it can also take care of people. And then this is the pretty outdoor space. So what do you think? How these, are the, these are the ones that back up to what used to be Treasure Island there, right? Is that where it hits? It's a yeah. two, so it's, um, it's Webster-ish. It's in 22 Webster? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's your thought? Well, yeah, I think I think it's going to go within 30 days, even though it's a slow time of year. It's a good basic layout, good condition. Do you think, uh, see, I think it's going to take longer because it's so small. I think it's, it's, so basically it's a two bedroom plus den is what you're saying. Small. Yeah. Small. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what are you saying? I'm saying 30 days. What are you saying? Is this in, um, I think this is too far west. Up. Is this Oscar Mayer? What's the school district? Oscar Mayer. Yeah. Well, that could help. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'll, yeah, I'm going to give it 45 days only to be different. Okay. Oh, shucks. Okay, that's it, people. Wait, how fast did it sell? No, oh, you what I told you, I've already, for, gotcha. everything's still on the market or under contract. Nothing's changed. So the okay. property on um, the second property, what's the street? Oh, wow. oh. Anyway, the second one that under, was under contract has apparently survived the inspection. Oh, okay. But he's still negotiating the uh, attorney with it. All right. All right, that's it. Well, it was a good week in real estate. Yes. Anything else do you want to report before we sign oh, up? But when we come back to you on the 26th or thereabouts, August 26th or thereabouts, um, we'll be talking about what's actually happened, how the MLS has changed, because the MLS has not told us anything about what they're doing. And uh, they, just that compensation field will just go away. But they might do other things. Yeah, maybe. Okay. So we'll see. We'll fill you in, everybody. That's the point. Yeah. You're going to be the first to know. Well, second to know after us. Right. Thank you. Have a good couple of weeks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Take care. Happy August.